The story has a way of repeating itself, unfolding from its genesis to its revelation. We encounter this recurring pattern within the pages of Scripture, where certain biblical figures and historical events provide glimpses of what is to come. Today, we embark on a journey through the tapestry of history, connecting the dots between biblical prophecy and the current global landscape. As we delve into this sermon, we must recognize that globalization, a force reshaping our world, has the potential to bring us closer to the fulfillment of biblical prophecies, especially those related to the Antichrist. Our exploration begins with a figure from the book of Genesis, Nimrod. Described as a mighty hunter and builder of cities, Nimrod has been associated with rebellion against God, although not explicitly labelled as an antichrist in the Bible. The parallels between Nimrod's disobedience and the spirit of the antichrist are intriguing. His attempt to build a city and a tower to make a name for himself challenges God's divine plan. As we look at history through the eyes of faith, we realize it is not just a sequence of random events. It unfolds like a richly woven fabric, where each thread has its purpose under the hand of the great weaver, who is God. Within this grand panorama, we see figures and events that, at first glance, may seem distant from our reality, but in fact, surprisingly mirror present-day circumstances. Let's start with Nimrod, this figure that comes to us from the beginning of the book of Genesis. Just imagine a powerful man, a fearless city builder and hunter, but whose ambition led him to directly challenge God. He wanted to build a tower reaching the heavens, not out of a sincere desire to be closer to the Creator, but to make a name for himself, to mark his greatness above all else, even God. This familiarity is what we see today as people strive to build their towers, seeking power, status or wealth as a means to assert themselves before others and sometimes even before God. This spirit of rebellion, this attempt to defy divine order and establish one's greatness, didn't end with Nimrod. It resonates throughout history, reflected in various figures and empires that tried, in one way or another, to replicate that same ambition. As we know, God's plan cannot be thwarted. In Babel, God confused the languages of men, dispersing them throughout the earth, a clear reminder that human unity under the pretense of defying the divine is doomed to fail. Now, bringing this reflection to our days, we see how globalization has brought us closer than ever to the idea of building bridges, of uniting people. This union ignores or defies God's sovereignty, seeking to elevate the human above the Creator. So, we are following in the footsteps of Nimrod, albeit with modern technology and methods. History teaches us, and the Bible confirms, that any attempt at greatness not aligned with God's will is in vain. But here comes the good news, the hope that the Bible gives us. God has a plan for humanity, a plan of salvation and redemption. He even uses our mistakes and deviations to weave the story of salvation. Just as in Nimrod's time, where the dispersal of peoples ended up spreading humanity throughout the world, God uses all things for the good of those who love him. So, my brothers and sisters, as we observe the world around us with its challenges and temptations, let us remember that we are part of a larger story, a story guided by the hand of God. May we seek to be aligned with his purpose, building not for our glory, but for his glory. May our towers be towers of prayer, of faith, of love for others, reflecting the light of our Creator in this world. Moving forward in time, we encounter Antiochus IV Epiphanes, a historical figure from the 2nd century BC. Though not a biblical character, his actions and persecutions of the Jews, including the desecration of the temple in Jerusalem, bear similarities to the predicted acts of the Antichrist. 
These historical echoes remind us that history has a way of repeating itself with individuals and events foreshadowing what is to come. The heart of our discussion lies at the intersection of globalization and biblical prophecy. Globalization is the process of integrating societies, peoples and governments to influence international interactions. Advances in medicine, communication and education, driven by developments in science and technology, play a significant role in achieving global unity. However, these same developments are also pushing us closer to the fulfillment of biblical prophecies. Ah, my dear ones, when we look at Antiochus IV, Epiphanes, we see more than just a king who passed. We see someone who, in a way, gives us a preview of much greater challenges that would come to confront the people of God. This man who rose to power in the 2nd century BC left his mark on history not for goodness or justice, but for acts of great wickedness, especially against the faithful of that time. He not only persecuted those who stood firm in faith, but went as far as to desecrate the temple in Jerusalem, a sacred place where people met with God. He introduced pagan practices into the heart of worship to the Lord, trying to extinguish the light of truth that the people of God carried. This, my brothers and sisters, was a heavy blow to those who lived by faith at that time. But most striking is how this story echoes through the ages, reminding us that in every age, there will be those who try to challenge pure and true faith. So, we speak of Antiochus today because just as he foreshadowed challenges of the past, he also alerts us to what we may face in the present and future. In an increasingly connected world driven by globalization, ideas spread rapidly. My brothers and not all of these ideas are light. Many are darkness trying to pass as light. Globalization, this phenomenon that brings us so many conveniences and knowledge can also be a path through which challenges to our faith can spread and try to profane our modern temples, our hearts and our communities. But here is our hope and our strength. Just as the people of God resisted in the days of Antiochus through faith and dedication to the Lord, we too can resist. History teaches us that no matter how much they try to challenge us, God's truth remains unshaken. Biblical prophecy, intertwined with history, not only alerts us to what is to come, but also assures us that in the end, God always prevails. So as we navigate this globalized world, let us remember the challenges that Antiochus IV Epiphanes represents, but let us also stand firm in the certainty that our faith which connects us not only to each other but to God himself, is our greatest defense. May we then keep our hearts as sacred temples where the light of God recedes and shines, illuminating the darkness that may try to invade. Initially, when efforts to achieve international integration were initiated, the world welcomed them as enduring solutions to global challenges of economic security and communication. From a Christian perspective, one can discern how globalization can be seen as a path leading to the dominion and reign of the Antichrist, prophesied to bring about a unified world order and government as foretold in the Bible. The first recorded attempt at globalization in scripture can be found in Genesis 11 verses 3 to 4, which states, And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had them for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. However, this endeavor contradicted God's command to humanity to multiply and subdue the earth leading to a conflict with God's plan. The construction of the Tower of Babel was not just an architectural feat. It was a declaration of independence from God, a sign that man wanted to reach the heavens with his own hands without the help or approval of the Creator. 
But as we well know, God saw this attempt at self-assertion and intervened, not because he felt threatened, far from it, but because he knew the hearts of men and knew that such unity made outside of his will would only lead humanity to more confusion and distance from him. So he confused their languages and what was supposed to be a symbol of unity became a cause of dispersion. Now bringing this to our days, we realize that globalization, while bringing many benefits, such as ease of communication and economic integration, also carries certain dangers within it. It can, without us realizing, lead us to build new towers of bubble, where we seek human solutions to problems that, deep down, are spiritual. The desire for a unified world order, a global government, may seem appealing, especially in the face of the complex challenges we face. But as followers of Christ, we are called to remember that our true citizenship is in heaven, and our hope is not found in human solutions, but in divine promise. The Antichrist prophesied to bring about a false peace and a unified world order will take advantage of our tendency to seek solutions outside of God. He will promise to solve all problems, to unite all under one banner. But in the end, we know that this will serve his own dark purposes. Therefore, my beloved, as we navigate this era of globalization, let us keep our hearts and minds steadfast in God. Let us use the tools and opportunities at our disposal, but always remember to put God ahead of all our decisions. Remembering that in the end, it is he who has the perfect plan for humanity and that just as he confused the languages in Babel, he has the power to intervene and guide his people to the true unity found only in Christ Jesus. Another historical form of globalization evident in scripture is the practice of the Assyrians. They were known for conquering nations and asserting their authority over them through war, torture and slavery. It was evident that they had ambitions of global conquest. Additionally, the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, as described in Daniel chapter 2, presented various empires reflecting attempts to establish a single world government. Nebuchadnezzar's practice of relocating conquered peoples to foreign lands and importing new foreigners into his domain aimed to suppress rebellions and coup attempts further indicating his vision of a final world empire. This fifth world empire is yet to come. In his dream, Nebuchadnezzar saw a great statue, each part made of different materials, representing empires that would come to dominate the earth. This dream, interpreted by the prophet Daniel, revealed not only the immediate fate of Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, but also a prophetic vision of the kingdoms that would come to exist, culminating in a future kingdom that would never be destroyed. The interesting thing here, my brothers, is that through this dream, God was showing the succession of empires and the constant human desire for unification and power, which often strays from divine principles. The Assyrians, as rightly highlighted, were not known for their mercy, but rather for their cruelty and ruthless dominance over conquered nations. They sought to impose their culture, language and gods upon the subjugated peoples in an attempt at globalization through conquest and forced assimilation. This is a pattern that repeats in human history. The desire to expand, conquer and unify under a single banner often at the expense of the freedom and identity of other peoples. And here, my dear ones, is where we find an important lesson. While human empires seek to establish their dominion through force, God establishes his kingdom through love, justice and truth. The kingdom of God is not like the empires of this world, which rise by conquest and are maintained by fear. The kingdom of God spreads in the hearts of people transforming lives, restoring hopes, and uniting us under the banner of divine love. Therefore, when we look at these human attempts at globalization, 
Whether through subjugation or unification under flawed human systems, we are reminded that our true allegiance must be to the kingdom of God, a kingdom that is not of this world, but is present among us in love for our neighbors, in the justice we uphold, and in the truth we proclaim. See, I am not saying that we should not seek to improve our world. Indeed, we should strive for justice, peace, and harmony among people. But our struggle must be guided by the principles of the kingdom of God, not by ambitions of power and dominion that have so often stained human history. As followers of Christ, our role is to be light in this world, reflecting God's love and proclaiming the hope we have in Him. An eternal kingdom founded on justice and love, where all are welcome and where true peace reigns. May we, therefore, live each day in anticipation of His glorious return. Amen. We have reached the end of our video, and I hope you like it. If you're looking for inspiration, knowledge, and spiritual connection, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Subscribe to our channel now, leave your like and comment to strengthen our community. And if you want to help us continue sharing religious stories that touch hearts, become a channel member. Together we can make a difference and strengthen our spiritual journey. We're counting on you. We've left the link in the description of this video so you can become a member today. Continue watching videos about the history of the Bible. I will leave two recommendations here on the screen. God bless you. We will get to the next video.